Okay, hi. So <clears throat> I want to tell you about a little command line par uh, argument parsing library that I wrote. I, has anyone here ever had the need to parse command line arguments? Or maybe I should invert that question. Has anyone never needed to do that? Um, and you know, like, uh, the, the library is called uh, argh, but to paraphrase Monty Python, it's actually pronounced R, because whenever I have to do that, and, and I had to find some uh, uh, tool, like a boost uh, program arguments or some other alternative, it always consumes my main, even if I'm just trying to write a tiny little progr driver program. Uh, now, uh, my library is very opinionated, so you might not agree with the decisions it makes, but because in, in this library, minimalism is the king, okay? So, um, I, and so much so that I don't really need to tell you because you already know how to use it, although you've never seen it before. So this is actually a very interactive talk, and I expect you to shout your answers. So the first question I want to ask you is uh, how you actually pronounce the name of the library? Uh, <coughs> right. Okay, so uh, here's our first uh, complete program. Um, we, this is our program. Take uh, two seconds to read it. This is our uh, command line. And what do you think this prints? Yeah, right, Maya, exactly. Just like uh, the normal um, uh, argv, right? And uh, here's another round two. What does this print? Bach, right? Uh, because that's the first argument. And what does this print? Bach, you see? Very easy. Positional arguments only, right? Now what would this print with this command line? I'm giving it three arguments, Bach, Mozart, and Chopin. What is it, what is it gonna print? Bach, Mozart, and Chopin. It's no, no trick questions here. I'm, I'm showing that you that you already know the answers. What is this gonna print? Three, two, one, zero. That's it? No, actually, minus one. Because minus one is the number, right? Um, OK, uh, round four. We can stream into a desired type. So what is this going to print? 42, right? But as you, see, you can see, we're streaming into val is an integer. We're not uh, in string land anymore. Um, and. Uh, what is this going to print if I'm giving it 42? But I'm actually looking for argument. If we go back, you can see I'm using the, the parens and asking for argument number one and streaming that into the integer val. So that's going to give us 42. But in this example, I'm actually asking for the command line argument number 42. But I'm giving it um, a, default a default value. So it's going to be 2019. Um, now let's look at some flags. Uh, again, very similar program. These are all complete programs, right? So I'm, I'm, I didn't even need to add, um, to drop some lines. Um, what would this print? Verbose I am, exactly. And you can see that uh, dashes are actually ignored, so I don't really care if it's a minus V or a double dash, same thing. Hmm? Infinite dashes, uh, I'm, I'm, I think most operating system would limit your command line length, so I'm sorry. But, um, let's say we want to have, uh, what would this print? Verbose I am. What would this print? Verbose I am. You see, you already know this, right? Uh, I don't know why I'm standing here. Um, what would, would this print? Maybe two. Right, because equal signs in options are automatically identified as name value parameters. So in this case, I'm, you can see I'm using the parens with the string my, uh, dash dash answer and streaming it directly into the integer called answer and just printing this integer. So instead of getting the string parsed, I'm, I'm getting the, the actual value after the, the, the equal sign. Now, what if I don't uh, want uh, to, to force my users to use uh, equal sign? Then I can add an extra flag to the constructor called, called perform, prefer param for unregistered options, unreg op options. Uh, and in this case, whenever we get an option with a 
um, a non-parameter after it, it would automatically be assumed to be a value. And again, what's the answer going to be? 42. Um, and in this case, the same program, this command line, what's the answer going to be? 2019, because it also supports default values. Right? So when I'm using default values, I'm not going to have to handle exceptions. There is always, uh, it's a simple, uh, very easy to, to set. Now, uh, again, we can use initializer lists to stream conversions before accessing the value. So um, I'm checking that uh, the if statement is actually checking whether the streaming into T of one of these Alice's is actually valid. And if not, it's going to actually print the, st the string. So in this case, my app minus T, uh, it's going to say 2019. And in this case, where threshold, I'm expecting a number, but core CPP 2019 is not a number, uh, so it's going to fail, and it's just going to reprint the string, right? So you see, you guys already know this. Um, it's a, sorry? I ah, I see, I told you, I'm going for minimalism. I don't need argc, because the standard guarantees that argv always ends with a null, with null. It's an array that terminates with a null. So I don't even have the integer named. And I'm not, I don't even have a return here because it's always guaranteed to return zero. So this is a valid, I said these are all valid programs. Um, yeah, so there's a bunch of features. We have header only, C++11, BSD license, non-standard non dependencies. You don't get exceptions uh, unless you uh, do the conversions. All the conversions are, are done on the user side anyway. So you have control over them. Uh, I got... Uh, CMake and even Buck builds. I don't know what Buck is, but somebody sent me a pull request, so apparently that's really cool. Um, one of the things uh, I don't have is automatic usage generation, which uh, most of the other libraries do have, but that's one of the main reasons that you get such uh, command line parsing libraries. Uh, they consume your main, because you have all these complicated declarations. However, and this is for Hannah. I'm sure she'll have something to say about this. Uh, I'll have a pop quiz first. So I have this little program, and I'm not going to ask you what it prints. I'm actually going to show you what it prints, and you have to tell me how that happens, or to think about how that happens. What's the magic that's happening here? Because as you can see, the program actually returns on the second line, but it's printing one, two, and three. And even if I didn't have the return statement, you can see that foo one, foo two, and foo three are never all simultaneously instantiated or, or, more tech, or, or, or reached in, in, during the runtime of the program. So this is a little bit of magic. You can go and check it on one box. Um, now, maybe we can have nice things with C++20 with non-type template parameters. So in my, I think, uh, in my ideal usage, we could use something like this code where we can put the, the documentation string of each command line argument parameter into the place where we're actually testing that command line argument and get that usage uh, generated automatically despite the fact that no program is ever going to actually try all of the, uh, going to test all co the full combination of command line arguments. Does that make sense? Yeah? Uh, so maybe in C20 with uh, non-type template parameters, we, we, we may have that. So that, that's my bonus slide, and thank you. So check it out. <laughs> <laughs>